Welcome back. What I want to do today is I want to show you how we can run a test for restrictions. And I'm going to show you how we can do that in Stata. And then we're going to do a couple more videos so we can see how it is done with SAS, eViews, SPSS. Now, in order for us to be able to run the test for, for restrictions, I have created here a set of 20 observations, one dependent variable and five independent variables. And the model that we're interested in is y as a function of a constant, beta 1, x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5. Now, this is going to be my unrestricted specification. And on this, I am going to, I'm going to impose a couple of restrictions. Now, in the exercise I will show you here today, I'm going to impose two restrictions. The first one is that beta 1 is equal to 1 and that beta 2 minus beta 3 is equal to 4. But then I also have here two exercises that I will upload on the website for you so that you can check whether you have understood the concept of restrictions. So let us get started and we're going to follow seven steps here today. The first one is defining the unrestricted specification. We have already done that. Defining the null and alternative. Now, we know that the null is that beta 1 is equal to 1 and beta 2 minus beta 3 is equal to 4. The alternative specification will be that either the first restriction is not true or the second restriction is not true. So let us find now in step 3 the restricted specification. And in order for us to do that, we will have to, we will have to substitute in the unrestricted model the restriction beta 1 is equal to 1 and beta 2 minus beta 3 is equal to 4. I can express my restriction as beta 2 is equal to beta 3 plus 4 and then I can go ahead and make the substitution. So here you can see I have replaced where beta 1 is equal to 1 and where beta 2 is equal to beta 3 plus 4 and I can expand the parenthesis in the next step so that beta 3 plus 4 x2 is equal to beta 3 x2 plus 4 x2, which means that since I do not have to estimate anything for variable x1 and for x2, I can bring those terms to the left-hand side. So my new dependent variable, which I'm going to name y star, is going to be equal to y minus, f y minus x minus 4 x2, and my new independent variable is going to be x2 plus x3. So we found the restricted specification. Now we have to create the variables. My y variable is going to be my new y star variable is going to be y minus x1 minus 4 times x2. And then my x variable is going to be equal to x2 plus x3. And I can copy paste those all the way to the bottom. And now I am ready to run both my unrestricted model and my restricted model. So let us quickly summarize the, the null and alternative. If my null is correct, in other words, if beta 1 is equal to 1 and if beta 2 minus beta 3 is equal to 4, that means that I will prefer my restricted specification. Whereas if either the first restriction or the second restriction are false, then I will choose the unrestricted specification. Step 5, create the variables in columns H and I. We have already done that. And now let us go ahead and estimate, and now let us go ahead and estimate the residual sum of squares from the restricted model and the unrestricted model. Now this is the long way. In other words, we're first going to do it step by step. And then I'm going to show you what the command is in Stata so that you can get those results at once by simply using the test command. So the long way will require that we first import the data and then we run, we estimate the unrestricted model and the restricted model. Now I have already imported the data in here for you. You can see that you can see that I have my y, x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5. And I also have my y star and my x star variables, which we will be using here. So let us first run the unrestricted model. And then let us run the restricted model. So for the unrestricted model, as you can see here, I have estimated y as a function of x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5. And what I'm interested in here is this number the residual sum of squares, which is 8,858. 
Similarly, for the restricted model where, where my dependent variable is y star and my independent variable is x star. Let us copy paste those results in Excel so we can continue. So here is my unrestricted model. So I have here now in step six, my unrestricted model. And as I told you before, what I will need from here is the residual sum of squares, which is 8,858. And I also have here my restricted model. And from here, I will need the value 103,612. Let us go to step seven, where we can estimate the F statistic now. And uh, I have copy pasted the values over here. You can, you can see here the residual sum of squares from the unrestricted model and the residual sum of squares from the restricted model. And my Q is going to be equal to two, which means that I have two restrictions. My N is the number of observations and it's going to be equal to 20. And my K is going to be the number of parameters that I'm estimating in the unrestricted specification. As you can see here in the unrestricted specification, I'm estimating alpha and beta one through beta five, that makes it six parameters. I want to conduct the test at an alpha level of 0 0.05. Let us first get the F statistic. My F value is going to be 103 minus 8,000 divided by two divided by 8858 and all of this by the degrees of freedom in the denominator which is equal to 20 minus 6 14 and the result is estimated right over here it is equal to 74.87 now to find the critical value i will need the degrees of freedom in the numerator and the degrees of freedom in the denominator in the numerator I have 2 and in the denominator I have 20 minus 6 is equal to 14. So I can either go to an F table. Let me enlarge this for a second. So I can either go to an F table and I can get for a value of 2 degrees of freedom in the numerator and 14 degrees of freedom in the denominator. The value is 3.7389. So the value is 3.7389 nine or or i can simply ask excel to do this for me and the way that excel does this is by using the command equal to f dot inv and then it's going to ask me for the probability and the probability that i want to run the test is and the probability is one minus 0 0.05 the degrees of freedom in the numerator are equal to two and the degrees of freedom in the denominator are equal to 14. And as you can see here, I have the same value 3.73. So now I'm ready to run my type my test. Um, let us go to <clears throat> let us go to step eight. I have here an F distribution for you. I know that my H1 region is going to be somewhere over here. My H null is going to be to the left hand side. The area in the H1 region is going to be equal to 0 0.05. And my critical value we found, we just found to be 3.73. More than that, we have also found that our F statistic, our estimated F is 74, which means that since 74 lies to the right hand side of 3.73, it's going to fall in the H1 region. That means that I reject my null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. So since I reject the null hypothesis, that means that I'm rejecting the restrictions and I'm choosing the unrestricted specification. All right, so this is the long way to do the test and you really do not need to do this. You need to do this at least once so you can understand how the, how the so that you can understand how the test for restrictions works. However, you can do this much quicker if you simply ask Stata or some other econometric software to do this for you. And the way that Stata does this for you is you first estimate the unrestricted model. So let me run regress. Y is my dependent variable, x1, x2, x3, x4, and x5. And then I'm going to write the command test and I'm going to put the restrictions that I'm interested in. So my first restriction is that x1 is equal to 1. And I know that this should be beta 1, but this is the way that 
but this is the way that Stata requires you to write the command to test for restrictions. And my second restriction is x2 minus x3 is equal to 4. And as soon as I click on that, let me execute the selection. You can see that I have my F statistic with 2 degrees of freedom in the numerator and 14 degrees of freedom in the denominator. And the value of the F test is 74.87, which is exactly the number that we found earlier. There it is, 74.87, when we did this the long way. So your task now is to repeat this exercise. Let me quickly show you what you need to do over here. In exercise one, you're going to need to repeat this, this what, what we have done here, only for the restricted specification. Instead of writing that beta 2 is equal to beta 3 plus beta 4, I'm writing that beta 3 is equal to beta 2 minus beta 4. That means that I'm going to get different dependent variable and, diff and, well, in this case, it's going to be the same independent variable. So what I want you to do is I want you to verify that you get exactly the same F statistic. Um, so you can do all the steps again from 1 through 8. And then in exercise 2, I have a different type of restriction for you, which is a little bit more simple. Um, now here I have defined my variables x4 and x5 as h and h squared. And what I want to test is that beta 4 is equal to beta 5 and they're both equal to 0. That means that my restricted specification is simply going to set those as 0. So you really do not need to create any new variables over here. Now what I would suggest is that you run this at least once the long way. In other words, uh, estimate the unrestricted model and then estimate the restricted model and try to use the formula um, to get the F statistic and then verify it through the commands in Stata or in any other econometric software. Verify that you get the same result. I have the Stata commands for you guys over here and I will upload this file on the website and I will also create a couple more videos. These ones are going to be very quick though. To, so that you can see how we can run the same test uh, in SAS, eViews, and SPSS. Thank you very much for watching and please complete the exercises.